ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Hello. Oh, I, I meant to dim that and not to uh, turn it off. Hello, I'm Dave McClelland. It is Sunday, July the 12th. Welcome to Mockdown for this week, my chat show where we talk about the odds and sods of what's happening in the entertainment world because we we know that during lockdown we've suffered quite a lot. And I've got a whole bunch of lovely guests. You saw their names flash by briefly. I'm going to bring them in now for you. So let me get to my correct screen here. Uh, I have to make sure I can see the right bit. My first guest, they come as a couple. Um, it is uh, Fiona Egan and Scott Warsfall. And let me bring in, um, there we go. I'm trying to bring in photos here at the same time and it's all gone horribly wrong. It's because I'm trying to do too much. Um, so let me tell you about them first of all. Fiona is an actress, a presenter, mom of two, co-finder of the Panto Ever After Panto Company. She's been a professional actress for 25 years. She must have started as a child and been doing Panto for 22 years with the exception of one year when she had a baby. I think that shows a distinct lack of stamina. Uh, first, Panto was Marley's Ghost, which was a musical adaptation of Scrooge, and that's where she met Scott. Ah, uh, at Cragrats Theatre in Home First, which sadly no longer exists. 20 years later, they decided to create their own uh, pantomime, and hence the company was born. Work-wise for the two of them, it's theatre, TV, film, corporate, touring, outdoor, voiceover. Like most actors, you name it, they have done it. Uh, they've got two venues where they generally produce pantomimes, the Viaduct Theatre in Halifax, home of Northern Broadsides, and the Marsden Mechanics Hall in Huddersfield. Let's bring them in. There they go. Uh, hello, Fiona. Hello, Scott. How are you? Uh, good evening. Hello, everybody. We're good. Good, thank you. I felt sorry for Fee then because you was talking about Fiona and you had my ugly face up there instead. So <laughs> I know. Had a really bad uh, let, let, yeah. <laughs> let me see if I can uh, back up on that and I'll try and go back uh, to Fiona. Come on, let's let's bring her in. There we go. Uh, she's here. Look. <sighs> yes. See. You must have been a just a, just a child when oh, you started absolutely. all those years ago. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, I like that, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> what a great meeting place, though, pantomime. Um, you know, what were you playing at, at that particular time? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was uh, the Scrooge character and um, the baddie. And yeah. uh, Scott... You, you I was know? Tiny Tim, the drummer. Uh, we had to... It was, it was a... Marnie's Ghost was the name of a band. It, yes. was, it was an actor muso. Uh, yeah. job and um scrooge was the band manager That's... and was making us work at christmas to record our next album I was <laughs> in the band playing the saxophone yeah. and uh, you were on the drums so it was a it was an actor musician show yeah, it's good. good fun yeah it was yeah. good fun nice concept first panto that the, uh, the craigbots theater had actually so it's it's amazing the things you do in uh, life in <laughs> as an <laughs> actor isn't it really uh, talking yeah. about people doing tons and tons of things, let's bring in my next guest. Um, I'm just going to uh, go back to myself here and bring up Liam's uh, image when I can do that. Come on, let's go to Liam. Here he is. I'll just bring up his picture and then I'll tell you all about him uh, from the, the bio that he submitted. He's a BAFTA-nominated actor, BAFTA, uh, who, whose work includes Peterloo with Mike Lee, Death Defining Acts, Coronation Street, Hollyoaks, and more. His theatre work includes a lot of Shakespeare, from Midsummer Night's Dream at, uh, at work at the Sheffield Crucible to Northern Broadsides and international tours for the BSC. Uh, he appeared in The Forehand of Miss Julie alongside Maxine Peake at the Manchester Royal Exchange. Mm -hmm. Other work uh, in theatre includes SJT, New Vic, Hull Truck, Alden Coliseum. I, I could go on and on. You name it, he's been there. He's also a voiceover actor and he's narrated over 100 audiobooks and can be heard daily on radio and television commercials. Earlier this year, he won an Earphones Award for his narration of H.G. Wells' anthology of short stories. The chances of anything coming from Mars are a million to one, they said. <laughs> um, 
When not performing, he's a magician and magic illusion consultant to theatre companies. And in 2018, he established a Sheffield equity branch. And he is the secretary of that branch. I bring him to you now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Liam Gerard. Hello. Hi. And and Dave is our eminent treasurer as well. Uh, I am indeed. Good to see you, Liam. How are you? Good to see you, Dave. I'm all right, thank you. Yeah, I'm a bit, um, some, uh, what's, what's the word? Some kissed today, yeah, because I've been making a fence in the garden all day. Really? <laughs> yeah. to, to keep what out or to keep what in? Well, but, yeah, good, good question, yeah. Yes. Just make good neighbours and all that, let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I wondered if you're worried about the zombie hordes post-pandemic when no, they're, they're no, reanimated yeah. after. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen, do you? No, you don't. You don't know. God knows. Who knows what's going to happen where we're all going to be. Know crazy times let's bring yeah. in my third guest go back to a solo of me and then we'll bring in her card here and her picture because our next guest is melanie hopkins melanie is a uh, sheffield born and based professional actor writer and theater maker event organizer described as a one woman army and you don't want to mess with her once she's got a camouflage outfit on uh she's single-handedly set up her own event the sheffield monologues uh, showcase SMS that premiered last March with lots of great feedback. Uh, she's also known for writing for the stage and with her most noteworthy piece, The Sylvia Swing, which I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, I was in, uh, mm -hmm. performed at the York Theatre Royals Takeover Festival. Two pieces of her comedy writing have also since appeared on BBC Radio's Upload Festival during lockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring in Melanie Hopkins. Come on in. There she is. Hello. That was a big send-up, wasn't it? It was. Thank you very much. Uh, well, <laughs> you write the stuff, I'll read it out. You know, you can talk, yeah. tell me anything. I'll just read the whole shebang, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, you had a good day, Melanie? I've had a fantastic day. I went for a lovely walk. It's been lovely sunshine. And I've come back and I'm here with you guys. So a perfect day. Well, good to have you all on board. Uh, I'm just going to, because of the power of the internet and the things that you can do, <laughs> I have had a little peek around at your photo streams on things. So let's just have uh, a little look at some of the things that I've been able to find. Um <laughs> I, I must first of all say that we're, we, if you'd like to donate to the Equity Benevolent Fund, then uh, it, it is a worthwhile fund. It helps out uh, all of um, you know anybody in the entertainment industry. There's the address there. I'll, I'll post the information as well. Uh, so if you'd like to help out the Equity Benevolent Fund, very worthwhile cause to help out the performing in arts during these coronas times. Uh, but let's have a look at this next photo here. <laughs> Fiona, tell me what that is. <laughs> uh, that was our first Fanta Jack and the Beanstalk that I've made flesh creep. Very nice. Mm. I seem to recognise that light fitting you're holding. I think I had one of those. <laughs> My crystal ball. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's what it is, is it? Uh, yeah. If you say so. Uh, and what about this one, Scott? Well, yeah, I'm the one on the left. Uh, um, really? <laughs> just <don't worry. laughs> Uh, yeah, this was, uh, again, from the same production. Uh, this was my little uh, brownie outfit, basically. Um, as, has that uh, as always been a, a fetish of yours? Uh, well, it was, you know, if you can't, if when you created your own pantos, if you can't create... If you can't dress as a brownie, when can you? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. There's got to be a some perk, so yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, this is some of your cast, I believe. Yeah, yeah that was, uh, again, from the Jack of the Beanstalk uh, castle we had there with... Uh, these, uh, these, uh, one of your I'm best photo bombing, I'm photo bombing, yeah, photo yeah, 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 yeah. Past, uh, that we've got there. We've got uh, Luke down the front who was with us last oh. year as well for us, yeah, uh, again. So he played our Prince Charming, but uh. Yeah, lovely, lovely people, lovely people. I think when you get to see some of these uh, cast and crew photos, you realise what mm -hmm. a good time Panto is. <laughs> yeah, you've got to, you know, you, you obviously you found the socialising aspect as well. There, yes, you? exactly. Is this a post-performance do? Uh, this was uh, the accommodation that we had when we were staying over at, uh, and that. So, uh, yeah, one of those towards the end of the run. After yeah. your two or three show days, yeah. a little glass or something always helps, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and stand on the stairs so nobody can get by you. That's good. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, there you are, Scott, oh, ugly yeah. sister. Yes, that was sexy Siri, um, uh, sister over to Alexa uh, for Christmas this year. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, lots of, and, and a lot of the, the costumes that were designed, uh, or Celia, who's uh, our designer, and uh, she, she has a better vision in what I should be wearing than I have, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. Um, a, another panto on there. That's My similar. mate, Barry Ryan English there. Yes, in the gold, bless him. Yeah, he was oh. great buttons. Yeah. Brilliant buttons. Um, yeah. Years, yeah. We, we, we started working on some other script with him. and um, Lovely. We, we've realised when working with Barry, you don't need to write too much because he makes the rest of it up when he's on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been looking at what you've been getting up to during lockdown and you seem yeah. to have family movie nights. Tell, tell yeah. us about that. Well, it was uh, it was just a way to get through, really, to dress dress up on a Saturday night. We've been uh, showing the kids all the, the retro movies and uh, so we just took a photo and then people seem to quite like guessing what film it is we're watching. Yeah. And they've been asking, oh, what, well, you didn't do one last week. Are, are you doing one this week? <laughs> so it's become a bit of a thing now, but the challenge is to find the right costumes and yeah. I'm guessing Grease for that one. Uh, that yeah, was, we did. That, yeah, it was Grease. That yeah. was Grease. It was yes, Grease, we, sorry, yeah. Yes. I don't know what it was. It was Grease because... Uh, there was a few that Shay, because she's seven, she couldn't watch given her age. So, yeah. um, so she no, made... is that that's... no, that's Top Gun. Is that Top, Top Gun? Gun. Oh, yeah, that's Top why Gun. she's dressed as Frozen Elsa because she couldn't. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's Top Gun. Sorry. Ah, now this did, was. Did you, did you guess that one? Uh, Men in Black. Mm, it was number no. one. She was Men in Black. Love you. Yeah. Oh, like Matrix. Yes. yes. Um... That's why I paint gaffed me goggles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, and again, too young for Shay, so uh, yeah, yeah. too tall for so yeah. Yeah, send her off to see a more age-appropriate one. Yeah, uh, we thought, if this is the time though. You know, all those times when you say, "Oh, do you know some of the retro films, some things you have to watch," and we thought that was a good time, better than any, to uh, inflict them on the little ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah watch, exactly. Some of them this, yeah. are a bit clanky when you review them, don't you? That yeah. they're perhaps best to remain solely in memory. <laughs> Grease was cheekier than we were. Yeah, it's really saucy bits you forget about. Oh. Yeah. yeah, there are uh, worse things I could do. There's a dodgy sausage scene in the background. Going oh, on. we don't need that. Liam, <laughs> I've I've gone on your um, feed, of course. The voiceover chap. That's what you do. Yeah. In, in yeah. that very room where you are now. In this very room where I am now. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I I wondered if there was a a marketing opportunity if you kind of made a uh, uh, a a lip. Uh, balm and voice uh, lozenge, and you could call it the voiceover chapstick. You could, what, 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 a great, what a great Write that down. What a great opportunity that would be. We can't hear Liam's response at no, the moment, no, Dave. We're just, just a lip read. Yeah, reading. exactly. <laughs> uh, and this was the setting up of our equity branch. A great day for us in Sheffield. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on some a rainy St Patrick's Day two years mm. ago. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's been it's been great for the community. I think for all of us to be able to get together because we never knew that a lot of those actors existed, did we? Really? Yeah, there's over two hundred actors and equity members in just in Sheffield, and actually, I, I'm pushing to get our branch redefined because it's not the Sheffield branch. It's the Sheffield and District branch because we've got members who, and we're also the fastest growing branch in the country. We've yeah. got members who come up from Derby and Nottingham. And um, I mean, even Chesterfield is a different county. So that's technically not Sheffield. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, th I think everyone who's involved in it will agree it's it's gone from strength to strength. It, it takes a lot of work, um, but it's definitely worth it because, I mean, we've, you know the, the the demand and the thirst and the hunger is certainly there. I mean, the the biggest big theatre producer, um, the theatre complex, Sheffield Theatres outside of London, is is on our doorstep. You know, yeah. Sheffield Theatres, and there's there's a lot to be done, isn't there? And oh yeah, things and it's it, it's going well. And and also like like you say, just to just to know who's around and to get together as as actors. And you know, so many times you you meet all these great friends that you're working with for two months at a time. And then you don't see him again for three months. And actually, yeah. loads of people here who do our job and or, or closely related to our industry. And it's great to see each other every month and just get together because otherwise you can, it can be a bit lonely, can't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got some more. Let's just have a look at this one. Um, <laughs> Liam, great photo of you. Midsummer Night's Dream. Midsummer Night's yeah. Dream. That's right. That was as the wall. Uh, and that, 
that rather beautiful hole in in my belly button. That that was the hole, the chink, the chink, the, hole. the chink, that was the chink, in uh, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream at the Crucible. And um, I I designed that costume, and uh, I, the the costume that they gave to me originally was basically a big ball that I was going to wear, which was going to go from my neck down to my knees, and it was basically a globe. Yes, and, and I saw. I said, "That's crap. I'm not. I can't wear that." And the hole was basically going to be a tube running through it. Yeah, and the whole kind of theme of the show was that it, we, we 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 said from day one, "It's not set in space. It's not set in space." But the set was basically a giant moon and stars. It, it clearly was set in space. Um, <laughs> but we, it's not set in space. It's not Shakespeare in space, but it was. Yeah. Um, and so it was all all the music. Um, Dan Gillespie Sells, who did the music for everybody's talking about Jamie. He was working on the music with us, and um, it was all kind of 80s electronica, electro kind of pump, uh, funk synth type based stuff. And so we were all, all writing this music, and I thought, well, the, the play within the play at the end, they've got it's got to be glam rock, it's got to be kind of glitter ball, mad hair, you know. So I kind of designed this, we came up with this idea of him the wall being like wings so you could flap out with brickwork on them yeah, and then you yeah. like fly around the stage and run around the stage a little bit in these ridiculous oversized boots i think and, rather like stop wanting to be a brownie you always wanted to have skin tight lycra with your yeah, belly hanging out yeah. well I'm, I'm a drummer as well and when you you know when you're playing rock bands and that you always kind of have to have a bit of dressing oh, up yeah. really. oh we do it because we like dressing up you know yeah i've got one more for you uh oh, liam on, a way. touching little one this one <laughs> <laughs> and i bet you've been screaming ever since haven't you yeah certainly have got another one since that was taken yeah, yeah. good lord happy days happy days let's move on to melanie's wall of shame uh oh, there you go. Uh, this was your entrance into the Gurning Championships for 2020, wasn't it? Yes, indeed. I came second. I didn't win that time. Oh, what a shame. I think it's because that lower left corner, you have a smile. You weren't Gurning enough. Yeah. Um, uh, you, 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 your Instagram, Instagram feed is quite the thing to follow. Uh, oh, you keep quite busy on it, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really busy on it. This is when I um, first got my ring light. I bought a ring light in lockdown. I have no idea how I functioned without one ever. I just, oh, my God, elevates everything. And this that one was, that picture there was, a. Uh, I was testing out villain characters. Yes. Um, you should you should explain ring lights in case anybody has any sordid idea of what a ring light actually does. Right. Actually, probably best. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Light is basically um, a ring of light on a little tripod and you can pop your phone uh, inside. Mine came with a mirror as well. Um, so it's just a whole ring of light that kind of illuminates a photo better. And it's cold and hot and um, colouring and all sorts. So, yeah. yeah. Excellent. I love it. Uh, this was... Aww. You were doing some scare thing, weren't you? Yes, that was at Hello Scream at York Maze. That was very fun. Very fun. Yeah. Looks it. Looks it. <laughs> uh, and this was Sil Sylvia's swing. Now, uh, Melanie wrote a play, What I Was In. Uh, that's as uh, up at the York Theatre Royal. Grand time it was. Very good play. We enjoyed it, didn't we? That was in the dressing room. So that was a grand time. And Upload Festival. You're going to be featured on BBC. Yes, yes, I was. That was um, my monologue. A relationship is like a toilet. <laughs> um, had quite a fun time writing that, submitted yeah. it, and they decided to feature it. And then since my sketch comedy, Yorkshire Dates, has also been on the radio as well, that was equally as fun to record. Yeah. Now, I've, I've got to ask you about this, because you have been, I must say, since lockdown began, one of the most productive people I've seen, because you're, you're constantly, I mentioned your Instagram feed, constantly a stream of new stuff that you've done tons of um uh monologues you've done writing you've done all kinds of stuff and then today you announced this i know oh my gosh i never stopped working <laughs> you've created a patreon page and this is for people to become your patron and sponsor you and help you out and you give them exclusive material is that right 
Absolutely, yeah, exclusive material. I'm planning to do masterclasses, um, live stream Q and A's, uh, photo shoots that have just are designed for the platform, uh, character videos, also even writing a monologue for patrons as well to use in auditions and yeah, and filming and stuff. Yeah, exciting. Now, is this because of the whole coronavirus thing that you've had to move into that? Is that is that something to something help to keep going? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm sure we can all agree how much it actually affected work and uh, it's crazy. So, yeah, it, it, I was actually inspired by one of my friends that uh, set it up for her burlesque. She's called Rachel Lightfoot or Deadly Nightshade. I'm sure she'll appreciate me uh, giving a little shout out to her there. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's, it is to um, try and help me um, financially through all this because obviously it's just so un uncertain with all the you know what the government said and all the guidelines when when can we actually go back to work especially if we are in theater and you know stuff like that so definitely to help me um yeah keep going yeah uh i, I wonder that that must ring a, a strike a chord for, for you fiona scott you're in the panto business and you you look ahead and we just don't know what's happening do we you know yeah. How how do things stand for you at the moment? Have you any idea? Uh, well, it's 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 just a waiting game, isn't yeah. it? I mean, I'll be honest with you, it's looking quite bleak. Not to be pessimistic, because I'm always trying to be optimistic. But um, in terms of if some of the restrictions are still in place, you know, in terms of the one meter distancing and. Um, in terms of what the theatres have to put in place themselves uh, for, to keep everybody safe, it's just not financially viable for numbers for a small theatre like you know the ones that we've been producing at. Because even your bigger ones, you know, we are it's week by week we wait for new announcements. But mm. even, even you know Broadway shut till twenty twenty one. You know they're saying that the West End will be twenty twenty one when a lot of those shows come back. It's it's so hard. We are trying to see what some of the big players are doing um in terms of their announcements so we've been getting ready so that we've got the show we've got the script we've got the costumes so that we would be ready to go should we get that you know that green light to go ahead and not be you know caught on the back foot but um i'll be honest with you it's, it's difficult it's difficult to to judge and, and, and i think from our point of view for, for pants ever after because parents ourselves and we understand christmas isn't a cheap time anyway for anybody and you look at you know, ticket prices across the board, normally, even the big, the bigger venues that are doing 30, 40 pounds a ticket, you know, we, mm. we pride ourselves on family tickets. So we did a family ticket last year, um, which was 30 pounds for the family. And we've always tried to make it affordable, which means if you go from, and you need to do hundred percent capacity, but if you go from a hundred down to 30% capacity, certainly on a sort of ticket prices that we're trying to do for everybody, that's what we that's the financially you, you, you can't we'd have to start the run now <laughs> i know yeah yeah you can't spend that all those months in a in a brownie outfit can you scott no, no. <laughs> you'd love to. As, yeah as, there's lots of other uh past five pleasures outfits i'm sure yet to get into but but yeah that that's that's the challenge and, and the other thing you know and i'm sure this ring choose across the board not just panto but it's that thing of even if you open and even if you have to do a reduced you know, capacity. Uh, yeah. capacity. Um, what's the confidence? Uh, we've been running a, a feed on our Twitter feed, uh, just asking, you know, would people want to go to Pants at the moment? Yes, they'd go, we'll wait and see, or definitely not. And there's an awful lot of people that, you know, only 50% or so said, yeah, they would think about even going. Uh, yeah. Everybody else is, we'll wait and see, or just not going to go at all. Um, so, it's not just that it's not it's, it's the actual confidence in people walking into an auditorium squeezing past people if they need to go to the toilet um you know not even waiting for the interval it's all those things and and especially panto because it's just as the uh, secretary said you know it's it's everyone that's a younger age range and it's everybody at the top it's grandparents and grandchildren uh, so you've got some of the most vulnerable groups that people were thinking about so it's really that's that's the big thing and, the, and we, we just won't know yeah i mean i know some of the big players have talked about we need to know by august the third yeah the restrictions are going yeah. to be and um we, we're in that waiting game we've been having our own meetings and 
as Fee said, but it's um, there's no crystal ball, no no one knows. And winter, mm -hmm. never a good time for things like flus, etc. Anyway, so who knows what this virus is going to do come two or three months or or even five months, really. Yeah, yeah. I know through equity, Liam, we've we've had a lot we've of, had a lot of um, discussions. We've had forums with a lot of local theatres throughout Yorkshire, haven't we, about the, yeah. the whole problem of trying to make a theatre accessible. Uh, yeah. And it's very difficult. I know the Lyceum particularly, it's, a, it's an old building, old corridors, lots of stairs and everything, to try and make that safe to get people in and out. It's difficult, isn't it? it, it it's, it's impossible. And I've been speaking with theatre producers around the country and two months ago i was i was av checked for the christmas show at the lowry and i says to my agent i said is this a joke there's no way that's going to happen and there is no way that that will happen i mean i i think personally this is not official but they can they can kid themselves there's no way that a, the christmas show at the lowry is going to happen any big extravaganza if christmas happens at all it will be on the small to medium scale where there will be it will be possible to enforce some kind of social distancing procedures i mean panto is a is a big money maker for a lot of producers and venues and it funds a lot of it bankrolls a lot of other productions throughout the year but it still needs to sell out to capacity to break even in a lot of venues and i think other places like theatre by the lake over a month ago um edinburgh lyceum they just pulled straight away and they said we're looking at what other countries are doing and we're just saying it's impossible like fiona and, and scott said it's it's not just a case of the procedures and the, the legal guidelines that are in place it's also people's confidence and in a lot of families it's the grandparents that buy the panto tickets for the family and mm -hmm. even if it's not panto even if it's just general theater you know you look at somewhere like the crucible um a high proportion of their theater going audience is of pensionable age and those are the very people who are going to be the last to have the confidence to go into a theatre. It's 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 a really difficult situation. It's an impossible situation. Really. I mean, it's not just the toilets; it's the doors that people walk into. It's the handrails. It, you know, it's you know, who knows what the situation? Who knows? You know, and like yeah, we, say, yeah. we get into winter, and then all of a sudden we get another big wave, and they say, right, everything's closed, and all these people who put so much money into getting theatre shows to a state where they can go on all of a sudden at a moment's notice the whole thing cancelled i just think it's it's a real dire situation for everybody involved and we need yeah. a lot of support and we need a lot of hand holding through the next 12 months really i think broadway said an american theater really you're looking at spring next year the big tv and film producers are saying like netflix is saying really i mean they've got all the money ready to go they've got all their productions green lit and ready to go and all the casting directors and producers from netflix are saying it's going to be spring next year before we're actually working at capacity again. Smaller things will start to, to happen, film and TV wise, and they'll start to kind of pick up a little bit. We've probably, we'll probably never ever see in our lifetime again the the epic film with three thousand extras in it, like Ben Hur, Gladiator, that type of film. That's kind of gone. Those extra scenes where we get, you know, fifteen hundred extras in a scene that'll all be cgi now i mean it kind of was anyway but yeah. it's just kind of producers aren't going to take the risk i liam mentioned a cast of thousands and i'm, I'm thinking fiona scott a cast of thousands is what you tend to have in a panto it's all those dance schools that come in yeah, uh, yeah. you know and you, it, it's often their first shows it's a big thing for them and it, of course their family wants to come and see them as well don't they absolutely because that's something else we've, we've really tried to do get the community involved so it's always the local dance schools from the two different districts and it's and and, and students that we you know their first professional job or they get that training we've, we've had technical crew that have helped us that from the leeds university and stuff so um yeah and then all the families want to go and see them and support them quite rightly so so yeah. um yeah. yeah sorry we missed we i couldn't quite hear what uh, what David was saying, we, I could, I could Liam, so I couldn't hear. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't hear. From uh, sorry, Liam, it was sounding like Norman Collier to us. We, yeah. So sorry, Liam. Sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 Yeah, you you were, you, were, you went a bit choppy for a little while, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. yeah, so I, I, I'm sorry if we repeat everything. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Can't, yeah. Can't hear you. Sorry, mate. Um, uh, Melanie, you you started off with your uh, monologue showcase, which I thought was going to mm -hmm. be a regular thing, and of course, then we locked down. Uh, so you got you squeeze one in yeah. just before 
and then it's gone. Just, just put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what? What's yeah. your plans with that? Because again, it's about getting a performance venue. Do you take it online? What do you do? Yeah, I mean, that's what I've been debating as well. Can can it be done virtually? And that's the thing is, do people want to see it virtually? Because mm. I think the kind of beauty with bringing all these actors together, you know, like we said, there's such a big community in Sheffield and you didn't realise how many of us there actually was. Bringing everyone together, it was just such a great atmosphere. And would it, would that work virtually? Um I, I, again, it's just a waiting game, isn't it? Until until yeah. we are, until it's safe to do so. Because, like you say, with Panto, a lot of people's family want to come and, and support, and mm. and that would that my next one for SMS was a friends and family event because we didn't get to do it the first time. Um, it was such a small venue, so that was my kind of next one. It's like, well, obviously we can't put anybody's anybody's family in danger, can we? So it's just a waiting game, isn't it? Until. Yeah. Um, you know what say, I'm, I'm doing a show, Grant. Come along and see me. It might be the last time you'll see me. <laughs> yeah, <God. laughs> But uh, really... We, we, we've actually put a, a thing out on our Twitter, actually, um, and we asked the question, were people... It was regarding pantomime, but mm. uh, carrying what you're talking about, that virtual idea, and it's, the poll's still running. Um, and at the moment, it's 48% said, yeah, they would. 52% said, no, they wouldn't want to pay to see the virtual thing. I mean, Panto really relies on audience participation, but like you say, even even ones that we've been watching through lockdown that have been virtual, oh, that we've shows, watched, yeah. even with an audience, live audience reaction, you still lose so much. And that's what theatre's yeah. about, isn't it? That that yeah. absolute right in, in front of you. And um, it's just two different, completely different mediums, uh, which is a real shame. So yeah, it's it's a hard one, isn't it? I, I, get, yeah. I get where you're coming from. I know I'm, I've done a couple of um, I've done some play readings through Zoom mm -hmm. uh, and done a, a production of a play on Zoom and very difficult as an actor to do. You yeah. know, uh, we, we rehearse for it, but you have no idea of what anybody's reaction is because everybody else's Zoom window is blacked out. And it, it's a very, very strange times mm. to be to be in the business. Mm. Uh, have is, is the stuff that because of the lockdown that you've missed out on work that you should have been doing and uh, <laughs> that has now gone. Oh, that was a, a knowing look, Fiona, there, obviously. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what, March the 13th, the phone was going, the emails were pinging and everything stopped. I'm talking yeah. everything. Everything that was in the diary for, for all the months to come. And yeah. there, was, there was work, yeah. I should have been uh, directing for Heartbreak for their David Williams tour. Um, it was going out of Mr. Stink and... Uh, that would have been, you know, sort of a couple of months worth of work to go through. And also for the actors, they have five shows on the road during the summer. Yeah. And um, that was, they weren't the first outdoor theatre company to, to pull. Um, but that's looking like we might, we might get a, a version of something out, um, start rehearsals in a week's time for that. But yeah, I mean, that was, uh, there's quite a, there's about 20 odd actors that would have been again, that just lost straight away, a, a pretty much a, six five or six months worth of work that just went like that on that day you know it's directors as well and yeah. people building the sets and designers yeah, yeah everybody yeah. what about you liam is the stuff that you'd had booked that's gone oh yeah about 15 grand worth of corporate work um any Ooh. any and all um penciled for a couple of tv jobs i'd gone um not not even any chance of getting a look in for any film work and obviously theaters just dead there was a, yeah. a few panto and christmas things um um doing the milling around yeah like i used to do a lot of panto but I, I don't do i don't perform in panto anymore but i do illusion consultancy for it and yeah that's, that's all gone do us a trick no we can't actually to do that oh, oh, <laughs> here we go <laughs> what's that one uh where you is it something like this and Doesn't work, does it? Obviously, <laughs> but the, the, ver the version I saw on YouTube, it was it was spooky. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, <laughs> Melanie. You you're kind of at that beginning stage of your career, and you you must have had. I mean, you were you were on a roll. Things were starting to move. What what have you lost out on because of it all? Well, for sorry a big to part. sorry to roll rub that in. <laughs> um. Yeah, for the big part, it was SMS because that, yeah. that was obviously going to be by by monthly, and obviously introducing a young adult showcase alongside that. 
um, not just an adult one. So that was the main uh, the plans for that, unfortunately. Anything else purely actor wise? I didn't like I say I'm still early, early in my career, so I didn't have like any you know major auditions or things booked in. But the potential that I could have had, you know, gone. Yeah. I could have exactly. done everything, and it's just no. Well, I, people I, were contacting I, me. You know, what is she like to work with? You know, and I, I was saying, <laughs> "Oh, really great!" And I, I knew that they were going to get in touch, and then, psh. yeah, exactly. Uh, how have you been staying sane through it all, Fiona Scott? I know you, I, I've seen you doing all kinds of stuff. You had a, a book table or something. What was that about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a book swap. We well, it's a bit like. Um... What was that? She keeps taking the news to give things away at uh, swap, shop. swap shop. Yeah, I'm going really going back now. No, basically it was just a table set up on a Sunday, and we had a load of books. So I just put about. I just said, please help yourself. And uh, what I found was a lot went, but a lot of people just left their books there as well. So I thought, <laughs> okay, well I'll, I'll just advertise this on the local site. That it's, we're trying uh, to clear space originally, weren't we? Yeah, and then it sort of grew, and then every Sunday or Saturday, depending on the weather, I put out a post and. We'd bring the table out and, and, and people were coming down and they were they were loving it. They were taking the books and leaving books and it was a bit like a, an ongoing free library really. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, I know that was got, really good. A couple of friends in Canada have got uh, they call them little free libraries and they they set up a like a little box outside their house and people yeah. come and go and leave books and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's such a good idea. We, we, when we started it, someone got in touch and said, you, um, you need, have you got a, a telephone box in your, in your village? We had, I mean, they had still had a telephone because one of them had said what they'd done is their old telephone box that didn't have a telephone in it. Uh, a couple of guys got together in the, uh, and uh, fitted it out with shelves and made it into a free village mini library. So that all the books were left actually in this disused telephone box, and that became the community's library that they had to so took and took it away. Took so, it away, so yeah, it's not nice to uh, some some sort of, yeah, I suppose sort of stuff that's going on. Old phone boxes are great, but you have to get rid of that smell of old we, I yeah, think, yeah. don't you? <laughs> uh, Liam, how have you coped? <laughs> no, how have you coped, Liam? But you've got two kids too, so. I've got I've got two kids. Yeah, um, I'm very busy uh, with work. I've got lots of voiceover things on. Um, I've set up a new uh, company in uh, lockdown. I've started um, an audiobook production and publishing company. And that's going well. Uh, it's keeping us busy. Um, I'm doing a loft conversion up there. Um, I've got an allotment, and I've got I've got two kids who need homeschooling as well. So. Plenty to be keeping busy with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Melanie, what about you? What have you been doing? Oh, God, bloody all sorts. I, I can never <laughs> sit still, me. That's just in my nature. I'm always doing something. Um, been having one-to-ones uh, with CDs and agents and polishing up my spotlight. And I had my headshots redone uh, with Michael Pollard. Amazing. That was really fun. Um, I've been doing a lot of recording, um, a lot of comedy. I did Manuel Puro's 21 day self taping challenge. Incredible, would recommend it to anybody. I've got to feel like I'm just giving out a load of shout outs. That's all I'm bloody doing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what, what is that? Every day for 21 days, you do a, a self tape? Yeah, yeah. So, you get um, a, new P, a new monologue, a new piece of text um, or duologue uh, every day, and you have 24 hours to record it. Um, very good, very good. Um, you get to all sorts about just for the framing of it, your eye line compressing i didn't even know that was a thing actually compressing a video wow I, 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 was thought, I was just clenching your buttocks while you're doing the lines <laughs> um but always yeah, works was... for me <laughs> <laughs> you, you shot yeah. some new showreel stuff too as well didn't you recently yes with um manchester actors platform with, me, uh, the the okay <laughs> two seconds <laughs> Yes, with the fantastic Amy Blake. Fantastic. Again, yeah. shout out, shout out, shout out. Um, yeah. That was fun. Yeah, that was really fun. And I just got it back. I just got it back today. We got to see it today. Um, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. Amy put it online today. She did. Yeah, yeah she yeah. did, yeah. Now, do you have a bubble? Do you have a bubble? Do you, who's in your Ooh. bubble? <laughs> um, yeah, I've been developing a little bit of a bubble. Um, I've managed to see a few friends at a distance Oh my god! I went to I went to the pub for the first time uh, Friday. 
great i know i know but we're virtual so it's fine so yeah yeah, we're, yeah. We're, 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 um <laughs> yeah that was that was strange that was mad uh yeah. sanitizing on the way in and it, they're all placed distance from everybody and queuing at the bar but it's like two meters between you which was fantastic because in the daytime there's all the daytime drinkers there and i was just like this is this is great i don't have to be <laughs> close to anybody this is fab <laughs> like usually you're really struggling to get to the bar aren't you yeah 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 but i'm, I'm yeah. pushing through leaning over and saying you know a pint a pint trying to get attention <laughs> yeah all you yeah. need to do now is go to the bar and cough. You'll get attention then. Exactly. <laughs> Works every time. Yeah. Fiona, Scott, have you, have you got a bubble? I mean, you've got two kids there as well. So yeah, how have school, you coped? Yeah, homeschooling was challenging. I won't, I won't lie. But easier when one of them went back. Um, so, yeah, we, we extended our bubble with um, our, our, our lovely neighbours. So yeah. and that, that really helped because they've got two lately. So they kind of occupy themselves. And... Yeah, I've been uh, doing like now. I've been contacting agents and uh, doing zooms with you know to to improve self taping because that's definitely going to be bigger than before the self tapes. Oh um, yeah, yeah, and uh, teaching teaching myself piano because uh, my little girl's learning it. So as I'm teaching her, I thought, well, I'll just carry on doing it myself. So <laughs> <laughs> she can show you how <laughs> yeah. to do it. Well, yeah, exactly. So I'm learning a new skill, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've been watching tons of uh, films, as we discussed earlier. A any any stuff that you would recommend that you've found some nuggets during lockdown? Well, we went we went back. I don't know, something about the old school thing again, but we went back because uh, on ITV Play they obviously been doing Broadchurch again for the first time round. Yeah, we were the we were the people that hadn't seen it. It was yeah. us. So we're um, watching it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but and if people haven't seen it definitely have brought i can see why there was such a big thing about it yeah it's great, i've been enjoying it? the alan bennett monologues as well monologues. Yeah, yeah 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 that, that's been really good yeah films wise well we went all classic old school wasn't oh, it really? yeah we i did enjoy i know i know it's not but you know what you're getting with the old uh schmooze the cruise i did enjoy that the uh mission, mission Impossible. Impossible, the latest yeah 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 and that's yeah um, I, for, for, I have to say that we um i managed to get hold of um so we went to disney plus when, when lockdown kicked in, Disney Plus, we thought, right, it's a free trial. Right, kids, fill your boots, get, get it down here now, uh, <laughs> and uh, make the most. But then um, we did, we did carry it on because Hamilton came out. So I had finally got to see Hamilton. And we talk about that whole watching it without watching it live. Um, but still, uh, well, that was one thing I thought was absolutely incredible. If anyone gets a chance to see it on there while it's on there. But I can just imagine. I still only got a percentage of what that must be like in a theatre to watch that show, mm -hmm. but um, but yeah, it was a bit, that's been that's been nice to see and and uh, all the sort of bits and pieces on that, isn't it? Really, yeah. it's been that's been good. Really enjoyed. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Highly recommend. I don't think I'm the first to recommend Hamilton. I'm a, I'm a bit late to that one as well, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Liam? Anything that uh, you've you've discovered a hidden nugget? Well, no, I'm. I'm, I'm... Honestly, I've, I've been busier than ever during lockdown, but that's meant that I've got less time to watch TV. I mean, I don't really watch a great deal of TV anyway, but the things I watch during the week that um, I follow religiously are Gardener's World on a Friday, because that's like clocking off time. Have a couple yeah. of beers, take away Gardener's World, that's it. And um, <clears throat> Antiques Roadshow on a Sunday night. <laughs> Again, it's like, if I've got a glass of wine and Antiques Roadshow, all is well with the world and nothing can interrupt me. No one's going to email me about a job while Antiques Roadshow's on. Do you know what I mean? Um, apart from that, I mean, the, the things I've, I've been watching on Netflix are uh, um, Narcos, uh, which is now finished. Um, we're watching, trying to get through Messiah. Um, that's very good. Um, what else? A bit late to the party with anything TV wise. I mean, all this kind of glut that we're having with um coronavirus and all these tv production studios and film studios not producing anything at the moment at least it will give me a chance over the next year to catch up to where the rest of society is on netflix <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but at least this netflix thing that they, they've kind of thrown out this little bone to the acting community haven't they that if you work in theater you can apply for this smidgen of cash is a grant but i don't know how many people are going to qualify for that i, I looked into mm. the details of that and i've got I, i've 
you know, I, I've got issue with that. I can't see how anybody, apart from a very, very niche few people, would possibly be eligible. I'm sure that there's a there's a mistype in the eligibility criteria because the eligibility criteria is contradictory. It contradicts itself. So if you yeah. fulfil one of the criteria, you are then ineligible for one of the other criteria. It seems like the only possible people who could be eligible for it are either people who went from PAYE to self-employed. So, for example, a sound designer who was PAYE with, say, ITV, who became self-employed halfway through that particular tax year, yeah. they might be eligible. Or somebody who was the spouse or partner of somebody else and who only did a tiny little bit of work, which was theatre work. Yeah. You know, I, I can't see how it's... It, it's hard because so many people have fallen through that, you know, out of the safety net, haven't they, with the self-employed grants and the, yeah. the whole pay-as-you-earn thing. Yeah, the, the main people seem to be uh, company directors of limited companies, of which people who work on the technical side, not necessarily performers, but people who work on the technical side of things, that's a lot of people. And yeah. the reason isn't a tax dodge. I mean, I've got a limited company. There's no there's no benefit um financially to having a limited company the reason is for the um liability and the protection issue if, if they're providing sound or lighting kind of you know services m a, a, a huge proportion of voiceover artists are limited companies they all fall through the gaps um there's loads of people you know people who started their self-employment you know a year too late or recently into it you know loads yeah. of people yeah. it's very it's it's desperate but they had to do something very quickly and very far reaching because yeah. there's loads of people who tell stories about people on fat wages sitting at home watching Netflix all day, you know, still getting their two and a half grand a month furlough payments. But it doesn't matter. The important thing is not to get angry at other people in society who, are, who were workers. The important yeah. thing is to galvanize support against the leadership, against the government, to yeah. shape them to go in the right direction. Well, to get help for everybody so that nobody does fall through. Yeah. That's right. I mean, there's no doubt if you are eligible for this Netflix Sam Mendes grant, that that's a wonderful thing. A thousand pound coming handy to a lot of people. But I yeah. just can't see how how anybody could possibly be eligible. It says you have to earn the most of your money in theatre. So not yeah. TV, not from you could work 51 weeks in theatre and get a one week film and earn more in that week than you do in the rest of the day. You're ineligible. You've got yeah. to earn most of you. You've got to be self-employed. So you've got to be self-employed. You've got to earn most of your income in theatre. That's more than 50% of your income has to come from theatre and be self-employed. Well, if you're self-employed and 50% or more of your income comes through theatre, then you're eligible for the SEISS grant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you, if you claim that, if you claim you a penny the in other that grant. grant, you're not eligible for the Netflix grant. grant. Yeah. So it's, it's balmy. I don't understand it. Yeah. There's one person who I spoke to who said they were eligible, and I think they were a sound designer, and they were PAYE. Halfway through that year, they went self-employed, and yeah. they were eligible, but I haven't heard anybody else who's eligible. Small before. pool, small pool. Okay, so we're, we're about 10 minutes from the end. Let's just look ahead. What's your, your wishes and hopes for the coming weeks as we go ahead? I'll, I'll go to you first, Melanie. What do you think? Oh. What are you hoping for? In the next few weeks. Yeah, look, you know, looking towards that whole Christmas season and everything. Oh, jeez. Uh, God, you really put me on the spot. Um, I did, didn't I? You want Santa <laughs> to come, don't you? That's what yes, you want. Yes, I do. I've been a good girl. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I First and foremost, I hope that, like we are saying, everybody gets the support that they so deserve, like the people that have fallen through the glass. Gaps, scraps, glass, <laughs> gaps, and um, a theatre just to come back as soon as possible. Please, please. I miss being in a room with everybody and watching a show. Please come back. Yeah. But um, yeah, just keeping on, keeping on, and getting better. I just hope things that are going to be a lot more positive and there's not going to be more pitfalls and things we don't need. 2020 is already hectic enough. Please yeah. do not let this be the apocalypse. Like, <laughs> We've, we've had it we've had it bad enough <laughs> i know well this, this is those killer hornets uh thankfully it looks like they've gone now but <laughs> there's goodness. 
there's a meth crocodiles have you heard that one <laughs> oh, Jesus. uh meth is going into the uh, sewer system and the crocodiles down there are getting hyped up on meth and uh and so that is the next thing that they're worrying about but that's for florida isn't it it's not for it's us florida's problem yeah <laughs> Scott, Fiona, what, what's your hopes and dreams for the coming months? What do you want? Um, well, if I had my that magic lamp to give a rub, um, it would be... You've got one in the props cupboard, haven't you? Yeah, we've got one in there, yeah. yeah. And I've got a few fairy outfits. If it's something does someone, then can't yeah. um, I, I think it, it would be just to get back, just as what was being said there, you know, that, that we can get back to doing live performances... Clear uh, guidelines. Clear to guidelines start, means that we need decisions those. to be made early now, not later. Yeah. So that everybody knows where they're at. No second spikes. No, and, yeah. and, and I think also for those theatres that the grants that the aid yeah. came to, that it was too late for. Maybe for those theatres that something can happen that gets them back up and running and back on their feet as well, because you know the theatre is a big part of community, whichever community you know. Uh, for all sorts of reasons, most of them have like a little bar where they have a coffee area, etc. Where it's used during the day for things like that, as well as just live performances. So, just to get those back in, so that people have that place that they can go to, um, yeah. because for a lot of people, it's it's a lot of company. It's, it is the equivalent of TV for a lot of modern people, where a lot of people love to just their job in audiences as well. People love to see it, and just so we can get those back open again. Yeah. ASAP is, is crucial yeah. for those communities. You know, it's, it's funny today, um, a friend in Canada asked me to be part of a play that they're putting on over StreamYard. So it's kind of like we're doing now and we're doing yeah. that next Friday as a fundraiser for a theater and he asked me to do it. So I had a rehearsal today. And so I had a rehearsal with people all on little screens. And, <laughs> and it's lovely to have a new script and be reading something yeah. and you realize yeah. what you're missing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is such exciting, a exciting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and looking forward to doing it, even though you don't get that audience response and know what kind of feedback you're getting there at home. But... No, no, no. Uh, Liam, what do you think? What are, What are you hoping for? Well, apart from a vaccine, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be nice. Um, <clears throat> I think. I think our industry in this country is incredibly selfish um i i don't think the job is the job is incredibly collaborative the people involved are very collaborative and the job in other countries is totally unselfish it, it's a, a a network a society-based industry but in this country as we've seen everybody who works well a large proportion of people who work in theater buildings who've been saved by the big grants are not creatives, uh, administration, things like the creative side of it is all self employed. So we're all scrabbling, we're all competing for a single job. How many subs are made for a single acting job at any theatre? You know, the regional rep uh, system or the repertory system is, is gone. That doesn't exist anymore, that kind of cohesiveness. And there's an awful lot of division in our industry at the moment in terms of the north south divide, the class divide, working class, upper class, or middle class um diversity all these things i think if anything good can come out of this it's that there's a big reset button that can be pressed on our theater industry and if all these theater companies and buildings and production companies are being given a lifeline with a big bailout package then they have to remember their communities and they have to remember the people that support them the council taxpayers on their doorstep that whose council tax is going into their funding whose box office tickets are going to pay their wages. And I think there needs to be far more support for everybody in society to make theatre in this country what it can be. And I think if we can almost reset the agenda, the, the societal contract of what theatre is in this country, that would be a great thing. I don't know what shape that would take. And it's obviously a long conversation. I, I think everything that's gone on with the Black Lives Matter um, in the last few months, there are conversations taking place on those principles and those conversations need to happen you know across the whole spectrum of society and i think that's starting to happen which is a good thing but i think theaters can look to themselves they've been given a big helping hand creators and performers haven't so we're mm. you know um but still those 
those theatres, that that big fund, that still has to be allocated, doesn't it? And, yeah, and they're going to be fighting over that stuff. And a lot of it will be loans. And, you know, what's a loan to a theatre when they're – how are they going to project what their potential earnings are going to be? And yeah. the big – this is go off track slightly. And I, I've said this before. Um, I said this um, – to the to the guardian on a on a op-ed piece that we might be writing um the 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 flagship theater company uh, companies in the country places like the national and the rsc so what a travesty if they were to close right but here's a counter argument right let's say the national what's the worst that could happen to the national they close for two years three years they go dark the rsc doesn't produce a thing for three years the national theater they're not going to turn it into the national car park the building still exists <laughs> All right, they might not put any plays on for two years, but that building still exists. And then in three years' time, another government will come along, or however many years' time, and they'll throw them 50 million quid and say, we love the arts. Here's 50 million quid. We give 50 million quid to the National Theatre. Aren't we great benefactors of the arts? But that's in the grand scheme of things, in the artistic environment en masse. It's not that important. That's important. It's the pinnacle of, of brilliance. But it's not the grassroots around the country. It's not people's first experience of a theatre. It's not the touring theatre companies. It's not Chesterfield Pomegranate Theatre cast in Doncaster. You know, it's not those kind of experiences where if they close, they close forever and they ain't ever coming back. The national will always be saved. The globe will always be salvaged. The RSC isn't going to be a, that's not going to go to the wall, even if it closes for three years. If the Pomegranate in Chesterfield closes for three years, it'll become a, it'll become a, a, a council building or it'll become a library or something like that it'll go and that's it it'll never come yeah. back yeah amen uh, here we go thank you we're, we're having a little <laughs> religious experience now <laughs> uh well we're, we're just about done time wise um uh fiona scott uh i'm going to put up your your panto information here panto forever here we go oh, thank, thank you, you. uh do you know when final decisions will be made about whether it's going ahead or not well we've been speaking with the uh, the viaducts um in halifax and uh we, we obviously will hopefully now have some more news by the 3rd of august yeah and we can have conversations with the guys there to see where we are but a lot of it is to see how they're kitted out to do and again they don't know until those guidelines are in place so the, yeah. I mean, we need to know by September to, to get a, I mean, MDs are writing music and stuff as we go, but ASAP, because it takes a lot of work still to get the shows out, as everyone knows. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the more chance we get to get things going, the, the better, really. But uh, yeah, we'd, uh, we're, but this, we'd, we'd love anyone's support on our Facebook page, if that's possible as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Just pants over after and uh, on Twitter and Instagram, you'll find us as well. But we, and we'll spread the word. And, and but one thing that has come out of this as well, is there's been a lot of support from a lot of other theatre companies and support networks as well from theatre, which has been really good. And that community seems like it's it's tightened even more. So yeah. long may that continue. For, for I, I think they they feel as though they have to do now because everybody's mm -hmm. in the yeah. same boat. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's kind of they're having to make networks which were never there previously. And, and, and things like this as well, David. So congratulations on this. You know. No, thank you. And long may this continue with with, with more fantastic guests for yourself. I'm, I'm hoping. Sponsorship, as you may have known. <laughs> yes. Come on, Brewdog. Come on, Brewdog. Uh, we're almost at the end, so I'll pop a can. Uh, Melanie, uh, anything coming up next uh, for you? Uh, one last say goodbye, pitch yourself, whatever you want to do, dear. Oh, gosh. Get on the spot. Um, <laughs> well, um, a... I'm putting your yeah. website up, too. There we go. Oh, thank you very much. Um a theatre company, a Sheffield-based theatre company called Mage Plays are having virtual readings of their plays that they've been putting on for the last two or three years. Um, and the sequels are just coming out. Uh, I think it's even going to be next week. Next Saturday is the show day and then a final one in August. So they're going to keep doing their live read-throughs, which is really good. I'm in it. I'm actually in it. And it was fantastic. Uh, 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 play all about D&D. &D. It was great. I'm conscious of the time. I don't want to take up too much. Oh, don't worry. I, I'm not going to cut you off. Oh, look. Mary <laughs> oh. Egan. I, I forgot to look at the comments. Mary Egan says you all look amazing. <laughs> so nice. I who that is. I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing that may be a relative of some sort. Um, I'm going to go through the rest of the comments. I should have had a look. Um, uh, put on three shows a day, says, uh, says Mike. Uh, we often do, but in, in yeah, Canto... Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Panto, yeah. your costume never dries out thoroughly, does it? I have damp boobs for most of December. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
I always have that problem. But there we go. Uh, hope, hopefully, the panto will go on for all you guys. And I think that's uh, a good thing to leave us on. Hopefully, the show will go on for us all. And we all survive this stuff. And um, fingers crossed. We'll keep you posted. Uh, we will. Yeah, great. Right. I'm going to uh, one final reminder uh, of the uh, Equity Benevolent Fund. Uh, if you do have a bit of cash that you can help out, it does help performers and um, anybody working in the business just to keep going during these times. Okay, can, guys. Can I, can I just add something to that, Dave? Please do. They, 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 um, they allocated over a million pounds to that fund in um, March, April, and over 90% of it has already been spent and given away in grants. So they, they have pretty much nothing left. Yeah. So, if um, there's a lot of people in a lot of trouble at the moment, but there are still people earning residuals and repeat fees on TVs and adverts and things like that. If you yeah. can afford a fiver, bung it their way because it will put food on the table for people who need it. Exactly. Okay, it's that time to say thank you very much. You've been great, the whole lot of you. Uh, that's the closing music. Thank you very much, my special guests, Fiona Egan, Liam Gerard, Melanie Hopkins, and Scott Walsfall, which I always Thank find you. a difficult name to say because you wonder what the W uh, and the F is going to be. So I, <laughs> I had problems with that one. Thank you very Sorry. much. It's been lovely seeing you. Uh, what, if, if you're watching on Catch Up, you can watch this later. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. I'm trying to stop it. I'm trying to stop it. <laughs> I've lost my mouth. Hang on. I'm, I'm going to put you all on screen again while I end the broadcast. My mouse keeps disappearing. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>